So you, you, you briefly talked about some interaction with the old school guys of your day. So like, how did they treat you as a young gun up and comer coming up your flashy boat and your gear and your hair? Like, how did they look at you, man, as that young rebel? Wow. And, and give me some of that interaction that you used to have with the guys that came before you. Because I think that's something that even my generation and the generation after me kind of struggles with is interacting with the guys that came before us. Gosh, it was definitely an awakening, uh, but traveling was important for me to learn, visit new bodies of water, but being here locally as well and learning from what I've experienced here and then traveling was a big help. But um, back then, you know, like I was second generation out here absorbing as much as I could take in and then applying that and being around all the true legends, pioneers in bass fishing and picking up and refining and getting some feedback. But lit, but I actually really just listened and learned mm. and, and took in as much as I could, you know. And yeah, you know, you turn some heads, you get attention and positive, negative. And it seemed like as time goes on, the better you do, you get the trash talk. Oh, Today, yeah. Back then, it didn't matter. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You're going to get it. But you just you move forward, you know, and you just go out there and do your best and try to... You don't let that stuff get to you. Um, you just continue to, to achieve and move forward, like I say. the the po you got to stay positive. Definitely keep that positive mind. And I take guys out to this day, and they... They're like, man, it's been tough and you're still grinding, you don't give up and you're there and you keep going, you're going. And I tell them, let's, hey, we're gonna make a day out of it. And they hang in there long enough and we turn it around and come back. And they're like, wow. They were like ready to give up. And I'm not, I mean, I'm there for the long haul and I'm waiting for that secondary bite to kick in and to capitalize on that and make a, a good or a bad day good or a good day great mm -hmm. you know and it's just waiting them out and just being there and waiting them out and just persistence and because of my experience because of the past i also we still resort to the old days i resort to what happened certain times of the year that helps to some extent but our weather has changed here on the west coast as well it's not the same we can't go back to the log books like we used to in the textbook. Hey, yeah, okay. We used to be able to do that now. Weather, water levels, droughts, conditions. We have fires. We have all this fire retardant coming into our lakes. We got fertilizers. We we have blue stoning. We got so mm -hmm. much going on here. We have to adapt to all that. So you have to change with all that, you know, and adapt to that too. And actually there is some positive things that you can use for your advantage when certain things happen. Use the negative and switch it around and make it positive in one shape or form. And bluestoning can do that if you know how to fish around bluestoning. I mean, there's some positive things out of that regarding the fishing. But long term, I don't believe it's going to be beneficial. I think it really puts an impact on the small uh, microscopic... Uh, uh, food, the base of the food, food chain. chain. Yeah, I, I believe it does. I, I really do. Uh, as far as the bigger, healthier, stronger fish, I believe they can handle it, but juvenile, microscopic, uh, all that stuff, I believe it gets pretty stressed out. And uh, like I say, you know, the good old days are gone, but yet we got different water today. Our lakes have changed. They've shrunken quite a bit. Siltation, all the wood's gone, rotted. I mean, all the key spots that we had, you know, that were structure slash wood slash rock combo, you don't have all that no more. You're working with hard bottoms. You're working with vegetation now in places we never had. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with the mussels that we never had. And that's changed up the whole system as well. Bluegill are getting big, fat, and the largemouth are feeding off the, the bluegill. They don't have the protein diet uh, for the most part from the trout plants. So now that they're going into the bluegill slash even stripers cannibalizing themselves, they're eating everything, catfish, Oh yeah. Uh, there's there's been a change mm. in the cycle of how they feed and what they eat. I have seen that going on up north for years. Big bass eating catfish. I've caught so many big bass up north. 
got a half pound, three quarter pound catfish lodged in its throat. Amazing, yeah. and they'll eat them. They'll eat the catfish, you know, and they'll eat the they'll eat the crappie. They'll eat the bass, the, their own bass. They'll eat the bluegill. They eat everything, and uh, that's the thing that's changed our baits as far as what we have now to offer. So you you've know? had to be a recreational <clears throat> biologist this whole time and be a scientist and and pay attention to all those external factors and, yeah. and, and put them into your game. Definitely, definitely. Um, you gotta be a weatherman. You have to be an astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, if you just do the basics and follow that and the simple guidelines, line up the stars, I mean, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just makes it an advantage for you to go out on those given days and you have a handful of those a month yeah every day is not a is not a bang out day you're gonna bang them out you get a, a window of opportunity to capitalize that you know you know and anybody else catches that they know where i'm coming from but um you just can't go out there and expect uh fish will bite when they want to bite yeah you know what what really sticks out to me about all my interactions with you bro is uh is your mental and positive like attitude and I, I really think that had a huge part of why you were so successful like can you tell me if there was there a time when your younger days when you were traveling and you were that hot shot dude from LA coming up to the Delta and Sacramento and and doing well like would you let some of that negativity get to you and if you did it did it affect your fishing directly to be honest with you I, I don't follow crowds, don't get into groups, never done that. Okay. I, I tried to just be myself, and believe me, I didn't go on people's waters. I respected their water, I respected what they were doing. They had their water, I'd find my own and, and make the best of it. And doing so, I, I just was fortunate, and some of the local guys couldn't believe I can go up in two days on a two-day practice. When we have a one-week cutoff before yeah. that, we only had two days of practice, and then you're full on going in a full blown pro am tournament and combined weight format, but uh, on waters that I have very little or no experience to put it together in a short period of time. And I was fortunate to do that, and I had a good run. You know, uh, early 90s were my heyday, and basically when I did my, I did quite a quite a few uh, lakes up north where I did very successful, and uh, you know, um, I have the proof. It's on it's on the wall, but. Uh, and those were good times for me and you know given also that yeah the more better you do the higher recognition they're gonna come at you they're, oh they're, yeah they're, they're gonna come you at got you. a target on your and, back and huh? for the young guys for the young guys out there now you know you, you don't let it get you down but don't feed into it mm. don't feed into it yeah. that's the key and I didn't but there was times the tournament officials people would come up to me and question me hey you were spotted last week on off limits you were fishing uh, in the marina, you were fishing, uh, or you were going past a five mile an hour limit too fast. I mean, I had everything thrown at me. Mm, I bet. You know, I, I mean, back then, and it was a lot of the haters, and I, I didn't pay attention to it, but I had to defend myself from mm -hmm. time to time, and literally just have to just, you know, let it play out, and, you know, I was never, never, never DQ'd or had any issues other than that, never went any further than that. But, uh, you know, you excel, and you just move forward, and don't let the haters take you down. So even in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, these guys are behaving the same way they are now? It's, it, it, it is to some extent, but there was a smaller group, smaller amount, but yet we earned everything back then for the yep. most part. We earned it. But see, me being from Southern California going up north, that was like... That took some balls. That was that was a big change, a big curve from finesse, deep water, reservoirs, clear water, finesse, light line. It was against everything I ever did. Mm -hmm. But going up north, it opened up my eyes to a whole other perspective world of bass fishing. Yeah, I read a little bit about it, got some ideas, and experienced it through the, the boat on boat draws back in the day. You know, we were fishing boat on boat, flip a coin whose boat we're going to go in for the day. That's pretty ballsy when you got to go out there and just like drag your boat all the way up, pre-fish two days, go out and flip a coin the night before whose boat we're going in. You know? That's sick. And, and, to, that, and to really hold your own 
Yeah. Yeah, man. To hold your own and, and hold up like that, that was tough. I experienced that. Then the Pro-Am format came in with the Pro's Ams, and that was, a, that was a pretty good deal, welcoming deal to build up the sport, to bring guys into the fishery, to learn and, and create a bigger tournament field, uh, the working man's tournament, so mm. to speak. Dobbins is, is talked about it for years. He's got it going on now, and it's a great, great uh, uh, tournament circuit that he has. I would love to participate. Unfortunately, that you know, I'm not I'm not doing it anymore. But uh, he's got a good thing going on, and uh, that's those were our roots. You know, those were our roots back then, and, and some of us now appreciate that and uh, are involved in it. But going back, like I say, you know, uh, times have changed somewhat, but yet that old way of thinking, the mentality, how people are. It's still the same. Yeah. You know, it's still the same. So the difference is how you handle it and um, really establish yourself uh, the right way. Right. right you right. earn people's how you, respect. How you carry yourself. You have sponsors. You have to uphold yourself. Because you're not, you're set representing an, them as well. Set an example. Yes. You have to set an example. Exposure. I was doing the Fred Hall shows for, gosh. 25 years of the Fred Halls, mm -hmm. you know, with my sponsors through the years and, and dealing with them. And I'll tell you, it was rewarding to associate myself with some of the best and some of the greatest people that I got to meet, travel and go places, experience different restaurants, people, and just the road trip. Life. The adventure. The adventure, okay? The adventure is part of traveling to get to where you're going to be. Absorb it, enjoy the moment, capture yes, the sir. moment. Because it'll be gone eventually. Enjoy it while you can. Take as much as you can, absorb it in, and enjoy it. Um, make the best out of it each day. It, even though you don't catch fish, there's something good about it. You're on the water. That's it, man. You know? You're in, in nature. You know? Definitely. Positive vibes, bro. That's all I positive. get from you, man. Positive, man. That's what's up. It's all about positive. Appreciate being, being that. Po positive. Yeah, and, and, and when somebody in the boat is giving you the downers and just this and that, oh. you got to fight them back. Man, that's brutal. <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I you do. Gotta, you got to fight them back, and you just don't let them get into you. You know, and the more that they give you, the harder you fish, and, the, and you come through and blow their wig off, man. Just, <laughs> I mean, literally. And, and they're going to just like, at the end of the day, you're going to hear them. They're going to open up and talk to you. And they're going to say, man, I couldn't believe it. We were just out of it you know we got one hour left in a tournament we got this and that and what happened and you just kept going and we got a paycheck or our day just turned out to be a, a from a average day to a excellent day yeah it's positive it's got a positive yeah. mind i think the key is people sometimes forget that we love this fishing because it's fun <clears throat> right yeah and then we kind of get into it for other reasons and get distracted by all that other stuff the attention the tournament winnings and being better than that guy and forget like how we felt when you caught that first four pounder on the rooster tail <laughs> you know there are key moments that you will never forget whether it's a big fish or small fish it's the moment the time the place when it's in, it's imprinted and you'll never forget those experiences is what's going to keep you going and you just keep going back to those times and, and you just look for a new experience a new time new day and new water and just you know capitalize on it and that's what's the thing is we don't know what's ahead of ourselves you never stop learning the learning curve you, you got to be there with it and you just keep going and you know times are different but yet bass are bass mm -hmm. people are people thing. You said it right there, and that's the thing. Remember, bass is a bass, and there's only so much you can do with it. And the thing is, is that we have it here. It's a question of applying it. You know, is the applying of what you've accumulated, your knowledge, and how you excel. Well, Kelly, man, uh, much respect, brother. Uh, like our boy Kendrick Lamar says, um, be humble. Exactly, be humble. That's the key. Be humble, you know, don't ever forget where you came from. <clears throat> Always think about the next generation and bringing up the kids and educating them and letting them know, you know, 
there's, a, there's alternatives besides being in the street. Yep. You know, and set an example. And contribute to the game, contribute right? Contribute back into the game, and that's something that we need to do more. We're lacking. I think we all do. <clears throat> we we all need to contribute, you know? We really do. And when we say, stop and help a kid. Show somebody something, mm-hmm. you know? You got a sponsored product, hand the fuel over to a, to a kid and show them. And that little bit of appreciation from them, my God, you, you have the impact alone what you've been able to do with these children is phenomenal. It's rewarding. It truly is. So I would pass it forward. Definitely pass it forward. You pass it forward in many ways that people just don't, it, it don't really absorb. They need to absorb it like a sponge and listen. Listen and, and hear you. Hear you speak. And words spokenly, correctly, and knowing to appreciate what is being said is, is something that is truly something that you need to embrace. People today take it for granted. People today don't want to earn that. People today um, need to look and follow internet and social media. I get it, but yet still time on the water. Yeah, man. Is they it? need to understand the struggle is what makes it beautiful, right? Exactly. The climb. The climb. The climb, up, the, climb up the mountain. The journey. Exactly. And it all goes back to the basics. You know, it really does. It goes back to the basics, the principles and stuff. Don't make it complicated. Make it simple. In fact, shortly here, I'll show, I'm going to show some baits, and some finesse baits that we... Uh, we did back in the day. All right, I'll let's go. Let's go down memory lane, down the finesse road. I'm gonna have to pull those out deep, though. Okay. It's gonna take a, gonna take a few minutes to get a hold of them. Sweet. Gives me time to charge my battery. <laughs>